welcome to the gun shop. Today you're here with me John to look at this. The Beretta 687 Silver Pigeon 5. Uh, a gun that they do not import as standard anymore, I believe, so it's not a stock item, however you can still get it. And had a real boom in popularity about six years ago. Essentially what you have here is a Beretta, and the one we're looking at is a 20 bore, multi-choke 29.5 inch I believe. Yeah, it's 29.5 inch, very very exciting length. And what you have is a Beretta 6A6, with some exciting shiny stuff to look at. Uh, so with Beretta, generally speaking, if it's got a 6A8 in front of it, you have the very same guts throughout the range inside here, between these two bits of wood, the same trigger, the same sears, the same hammers, the same everything. The same action block, the same locking points, the barrel's more or less the same up until the end of the chamber. What you change is the outside, the wood grade, and obviously the chokes, the boring, all that sort of thing. So mechanically you're buying something immensely reliable. This however varies slightly differently in the way it looks from the rest of the range. And if you come in close, we'll have a little look at that. interchangeable butt pad, it's got the wooden heel plate on there in the moment, but you obviously have different sizes of rubber, you've got a leather covered pad, all sorts of stuff to go on there. And it's the game style stock, the sporter style stock obviously takes its own pads, uh, and they're slightly different between the two, not that that's exciting. This gun did kick a bit, it's probably because of that, and putting something softer on there certainly would help, because they do certainly hoof a bit. Wood, uh, grade five-ish wood. Beretta have always been a little bit low on their wood grades. They never come up with anything too flashy. Oh, that's bad. It's certainly just very nice wood. Very nice wood, certainly, but, you know, different to other people's grade fives. I'd put it more at a grade, a nice number three or a grade four, really. But it's pleasant enough, and obviously the wood is a lottery. I've seen better than this, I've seen worse on these, and this is a good representative example. Uh, moving on gold trigger and a lot of gold inlay around the place so you've got gold there you've got a couple of gold partridge-ish things and a couple of gold quail grouse birds birds with crests that we don't have in England uh, you have a color hardened action and that flows all the way from the inside to the outside and all the action frame when you take the stock off that's quite pleasant uh, standard Beretta so you've got the standard action shape style safety catch with selector. Two dots top, one dot bottom. A good example thing, and it is very nice. You have a Schnabel forend, again with laser cut checkering, and black screws and color hardened accoutrements of iron furniture. The barrels are standard Beretta barrels, dueling on the side, nice high gloss black tubes on this particular model with the mobile multi chokes. A very nice profile of a gun goes together very very well actually very very good looking gun So this is without a doubt a absolutely stunning looking gun. Some things however aren't quite as perfect as they seem. Firstly the price it is a little bit more pricey I think, I don't know what they are now, a few years ago they were only 1500 quid, I believe now they're well over two grand. You're in a market of a whole lot of different guns at that sort of era, the only problem being is this is colour hardened. To try and find a colour hardened gun at that price point this is about your only option. The real issue there is it's not actually colour hardened. 
it is a chemical effect to colour hardening. You know, if you think to get something colour hardened, it costs about, I think if I get it done, it's probably about 700 quid to have something rehardened or, or just hardened, a good job. That's a vast portion of the cost. Time, effort, consistency, and quality control all play on that. So this is actually just a chemical thing. If you spray this with Tetra Action Blaster degreaser, it will come off. Um, don't ask how we found that out, because <laughs> it's not a very good story. It's not an embarrassing story, but um, it wasn't certainly something I was expecting to happen. It's got a lacquer over the top, and uh, that can cut out with certain chemicals, not just the Tetra. Other chemicals will cut through that, and you will lose your beautiful colour hardening. Um, obviously, just like colour hardening, it suffers in all the same ways. It wears off, it can rust over and sort of thing, but it doesn't rust over because it's not true colour hardening, because it's not, it's built on a break reaction. So there is positives to having fake colour hardening. Uh, the gold is nice, uh, although uh, certainly it will put a, a lot of people off, but, you know, I don't care about them. It, it's a nice gun. It's nice with the gold and it's nice with the hardening, it looks quite nice. And lastly, in this particular configuration, and I don't know whether it's just this gun, and Berettas do obviously come short, too short for me, not short, they come at 14 and a half, which is too short for me, and they come straight, they have very, very little cast on the standard guns, and that all equals a gun that kicked a lot. Um, I've shot the 12 ball version of these and they're really nice, uh, but for some bizarre reason this one hurt. Uh, that's, that's all I have to say, is it did hurt. Not to be put off though, it is a 20 bore and they were punch cartridges and so on and so on and so forth. Okay. Obviously, it's a wonderful gun, it's beautiful, its dimensions are wonderful, it runs on the Beretta 20 bore action frame, which is wonderful. Uh, I would have liked to see more of an American rounded forend than the Schnabel type, uh, but hey, uh, can't change that. They are lovely. If you want one, there's a lot second hand and it's worth checking them out. This one's here for sale and we get a lot through the doors. Have a look at them, see what you think. But bear in mind that that colour hardening isn't quite as authentic as you hope. However, they do come up with an absolutely stunning finish by the process they use. It looks like the most perfect colour hardening in the world. And that definitely counts for something. Take care, guys. Hope you like this video. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.